In the realm of fame and fortune, some celebrities have fallen from grace and are now paying the price behind bars. From sex crimes to drug trafficking and even murder, their actions have shocked the nation. Despite their once glamorous lives, these individuals are now serving lengthy prison sentences, with some maintaining their innocence while others admit to their wrongdoing. As their stories continue to unfold, they serve as a sobering reminder that no one is above the law. Will Hayden once a prominent figure in the American television industry as the star of the Discovery Channel reality show, Sons of Guns, saw his life spiral into darkness with convictions for heinous sex crimes. Despite his fame and success, allegations of serious abuse tarnished his career and reputation. In August 2014, Hayden's downfall reached its nadir when he was arrested on charges of child molestation and other related offenses. Initially, he vehemently denied these accusations, attributing them to a personal vendetta. However, as additional victims, including his own daughter, came forward, the damning nature of the allegations became undeniable. These abhorrent crimes not only brought an abrupt end to Hayden's television career, but also resulted in a severe punishment. In 2017, he received three consecutive life sentences, plus 40 years in prison, with no possibility of parole or probation. Hayden now faces the full weight of his despicable actions behind bars, where he must reckon with the consequences of his crimes for the rest of his life. Allison Mack, renowned for her role in Smallville, found herself entangled in a disturbing case that shook the public in 2018. She was arrested for her involvement in sex trafficking and conspiracy linked to the NXIVM organization, described as a sinister network engaged in shocking acts. Police investigations unveiled Mac's pivotal role in enticing women into the organization, which was spearheaded by ENXIVM founder Keith Ranier. Mac stands accused of engaging in sex trafficking and conspiring to coerce individuals into forced labor effectively transforming a group of female consultants into perpetrators of heinous acts. While released on bail, Mac faced significant legal repercussion. In 2021, she was sentenced to three years in prison, followed by three years of probation, along with 1,000 hours of community service and a $20,000 fine. Despite serving 21 months of her sentence, she was released in July 2023. Max fall from grace as a celebrated TV star into the shadows of crime and punishment serves as a poignant reminder of the perils of power and the potential for its abuse in a world rife with temptation. Her story stands as a stark cautionary tale, highlighting the importance of remaining vigilant against the allure of influence and the exploitation of others. Harvey Weinstein, once a titan of Hollywood, now finds himself behind bars, a consequence of the allegations brought forth by just two women, Miriam Haley and Jessica Mann. However, their bravery has opened the floodgates for many other women to come forward, shedding light on a pattern of sexual misconduct spanning years. In 2018, Weinstein's empire began to crumble when he was arrested in New York, facing charges ranging from rape to sexual abuse. The extent of his alleged crimes extended beyond state lines, with investigations launched in California and London. Despite his initial release on a staggering $1 million bond, Weinstein's legal battles were far from over. Additional charges, including first and third degree rape, were brought against him. Throughout the ordeal, Weinstein vehemently denied any wrongdoing, claiming all encounters were consensual. However, in a landmark verdict in 2020, Weinstein's facade of power and privilege crumbled further as he was found guilty of criminal sexual acts and third-degree rape against Miriam Haley. Yet, amidst the triumph, there was also disappointment as Weinstein was acquitted of predatory sexual assault and first-degree rape against Jessica Mann. The sentencing that followed sent shockwaves through the entertainment industry and beyond. Weinstein, once an untouchable figure, was handed a staggering 23-year prison sentence a testament to the severity of his crimes and the voices of his victims finally being heard. As the dust settles, Weinstein's case serves as a powerful catalyst for change, sparking crucial conversations about power dynamics, sexual assault, and accountability. 
It's a reminder that no one is above the law, no matter their fame or influence, and that justice, though often delayed, can prevail. Mike Tyson, born in 1966, is a former professional boxer who made history when he became the youngest heavyweight champion at the age of 20. Despite his remarkable achievements in the ring, but Tyson's career was often ruined by personal and legal instabilities, troubles, and controversies. In 1992, Tyson's life took a major turn when he was convicted of rape and sexual misconduct in the case involving Desiree Washington, a finalist in the Miss Black America pageant. As a result, he was sentenced to six years in prison, three of them served at Indiana's Plainfield Correctional Facility. After his release, Tyson faced challenges in reviving his career and repairing his public image. Despite his best efforts, he still encountered countless obstacles both inside and outside the ring. Notably, in 1997, he was disqualified after biting off part of Evander Holyfield's ear, leading to a temporary suspension from boxing. However, despite his difficult past, Tyson has shown a commitment to personal growth and innovation in recent years. He ventured into acting, appearing in several films and television shows, and also founded a cannabis company. In addition, Tyson returned to the ring to participate in exhibition matches. The story of Mike Tyson serves as a poignant reminder of the complex relationship between celebrity, individual behavior, and the possibility of recovery and redemption. Despite his past mistakes, Tyson's journey highlights his ability to overcome adversity and find redemption through perseverance and self-improvement. Joe Exotic, famously known as the Tiger King, gained international fame as an American media personality and businessman who operated the Greater Wynwood Exotic Animal Park in Wynwood, Oklahoma from 1999 to 2018. He garnered attention for his care of exotic tigers at the park, which he renamed Greater Wynwood Curiosities. However, Joe Exotic's career took a dark turn in September 2018 when he was arrested for allegedly attempting to hire a hitman to assassinate Carol Baskin Baxton, a prominent animal rights activist, and his longtime rival. Baskin Baxton had accused Joe Exotic of animal abuse, leading to a heated feud and making him a target of investigation. While Baskin Baxton was not implicated in her husband's disappearance, she faced legal troubles of her own and was convicted of unrelated crimes in 2019, receiving a 22-year prison sentence. Meanwhile, Joe Exotic was convicted on two counts of murder for hire and 17 federal charges, including animal abuse, which revealed his involvement in the deaths of five tigers and the falsification of records at Greater Wynwood Exotic Animal Park. In January 2022, Baskin Baxton's sentence was extended to 21 years, but she still must serve 21 years, as opposed to the initially handed 22-year sentence. The high-profile case surrounding Joe Exotic and his feud with Baskin Baxton captivated audiences worldwide, shedding light on the complexities of the exotic animal industry and the legal consequences of vendettas gone awry. Skylar DeLeon, once known for his role in the Power Rangers universe, has transitioned from a promising childhood to a life marred by darkness and crime. His involvement in the 2004 murders of Thomas and Jackie Hawks from Prescott, Arizona thrust his name into the forefront of legal and media attention. In April 2009, DeLeon and his accomplice Jennifer Henderson were convicted of the brutal murder. While DeLeon was sentenced to death, Henderson received two life sentences without parole. Two other co-defendants, John Fitzgerald Kennedy and Alonzo McCain, were also found guilty in connection with the case. The Hawks, who were simply trying to sell their boat, tragically vanished after meeting with Deleon and Henderson. They were bound and thrown into the ocean, their bodies never to be recovered. After attempting to evade capture, 
De Leon was apprehended when an accomplice confessed to the police. Following a dramatic trial, he was sentenced to death in 2009. However, this punishment remains unfulfilled due to California's decision to block execution. De Leon's life took another unexpected turn when, in 2009, he underwent gender reassignment and hormone therapy, transitioning from male to female. Today, she is known as Skylar Preciosa, symbolizing a journey of rebirth and renewal amidst the tumultuous events that have defined her. Jared Fogel, formerly famous for his Subway sandwich commercials, had a notable transformation that caught the public's attention. Starting out weighing in excess of 400 pounds at the age of 20, Fogel decided to change his life in 1998 by exercising and eating two Subway sandwiches a day. His weight loss journey, documented by the Los Angeles Times, led him to lose more than half of his weight in a year, putting him in the public eye. Fogel later became an endorser of men's health products and a prominent figure in Subway's advertising campaigns, starting with their first sandwich commercial in 2000. He became personal work into a profitable business. However, his life took a sudden change in the following years. According to shocking information revealed, in 2015, Fogel admitted to possessing inappropriate documents and improper communication with children through an agreement with the prosecution. He was convicted of traveling across state lines to engage in inappropriate activities, including paying for services and illegally possessing child-related materials. More worryingly, it was discovered that some individuals within his organization supported his misconduct. As a result, Fogel received a serious penalty of more than 15 years in prison, with no restrictions allowed for at least 13 years. In addition, he was also required to pay a large sum of money to compensate victims affected by his actions. The story of the downfall of Jared Fogel, who was previously praised for his weight loss achievements, is a stark reminder of the tragic consequences of taking advantage of the weak and the fall from grace. Noble position that can happen. Hollywood has seen its fair share of redemption stories, but few are as captivating as that of Robert Downey Jr. Born on April 4, 1965, Downey began his acting career at a young age, displaying remarkable talent early on. He garnered praise for his performances in films such as Less Than Zero and Chaplin, earning an Academy Award nomination for the latter. However, Downey's promising career took a tragic turn when he became ensnared in drug addiction. His struggles with substance abuse began in his teenage years, influenced in part by his father, filmmaker Robert Downey Sr. Despite his early successes, Downey's drug experimentation led to numerous legal troubles, including arrests for possession of heroin, cocaine, and a handgun. In 1999, Downey was sentenced to nearly a year in a California substance abuse treatment facility and state jail. His time behind bars became a pivotal moment of self-reflection, shaping his determination to turn his life around. Upon his release, Downey faced significant challenges in reviving his career due to his history of substance abuse and legal issues. However, with the support of friends and industry allies, he re-entered the entertainment industry. His casting as Tony Stark in Iron Man in 2008 marked a resurgence in his career. Downey's portrayal of Stark in the Marvel Cinematic Universe garnered widespread acclaim, solidifying his successful comeback to Hollywood. Today, he is not only known for his acting prowess, but also for his remarkable journey of recovery. Robert Downey Jr.'s story serves as a testament to personal resilience and the possibility of second chances proving that even in the darkest of circumstances, there is a path back to the spotlight. If you want to explore the journey with me, please leave number one and watch this video until the end. Interesting things are waiting for you in the video. Zara Fithian, 39 years old, and her husband Victor Mark, 59 years old, just went through a stressful trial at Nottingham Crown Court, UK, where they were convicted of a total of 14 crimes related to abuse child sex. The couple began their abuse when the victim was just 13 years old, and it lasted from 2005 to 2008. The BBC revealed that the police investigation relied on the testimony of a victim, known as a A, who detailed the atrocities Fithian and Mark committed against her when she was a teenager. A child. 
uh, accused that two people sexually abused her from the age of 13 to 15 years old. Mark even forced Ada to have sex about 20 times between 2005 and 2008. The victim shared, I knew it was wrong, but didn't know how to get out of it or say anything. Uh, also alleged that Mark threatened to harm her if she revealed anything. In addition, Victor Mark also faces four more charges after another woman accused him of sexually abusing her from 2002 to 2003 when she was 15 years old. Parmander Dillon, senior investigating officer, expressed gratitude for the courage of the two victims and hoped that the imposition of fines would bring some comfort to them, while also emphasizing that this will be a valuable lesson for others. Amy Locaine is an actress best known for her roles in John Waters' 1990 musical comedy, Cry Baby, and as Sandy Harling in the first season of the soap opera Melrose Place in 1992. However, her name became associated with the shocking events of June 27, 2010, when she caused a fatal motor vehicle collision in Montgomery, New Jersey. Locaine was driving at a higher speed than the limit and collided with Fred Seaman's car resulting in the death of Seaman's wife, 60-year-old Helene Seaman. Testing conducted after the accident revealed she had a blood alcohol level nearly three times the legal limit. Locaine was convicted of vehicular homicide and assault by auto and was later sentenced to three years in prison. However, after a series of verdicts and reviews, she was resentenced to eight years in prison in September 2020. Locaine is currently serving her sentence at Edna Mahan Women's Correctional Facility, and is expected to spend more than six years in prison before she can be considered for parole. This case has garnered significant public attention and continues to be a focal point in debates about the legal system and punishment in the state of New Jersey. Oscar Pistorius, an Olympic and Paralympic athlete, tragically shot and killed his girlfriend, Rhea Vestinkamp, at his residence in Pretoria, South Africa, on Valentine's Day in 2013. Pistorius was subsequently arrested and charged with murder, despite his assertions that he mistook Steenkamp for an intruder, believing she was seeking refuge in his bathroom. After a trial, Pistorius was found guilty of culpable homicide by a jury and was sentenced to five years in prison. Additionally, he received a three-year suspended sentence for reckless endangerment. However, Pistorius was released from prison after serving only a year. Subsequently, the initial verdict was overturned by authorities, and Pistorius was resentenced to an additional 13 years and five months in jail for murder. Consequently, the athlete faces the possibility of remaining imprisoned until 2030, although he may be eligible for parole in 2023. Felicity Huffman, born on December 9, 1962, is an award-winning actress best known for her roles in Desperate Housewives and Transamerica. However, Huffman's reputation took a hit in 2019 due to her involvement in a highly publicized college admission scandal. Huffman, along with several other affluent parents, was accused of engaging in deceit to secure admissions for their children into prestigious universities. The actress admitted to paying $15,000 to have a proctor alter her daughter's SAT exam answers. Huffman pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit honest services mail fraud in May 2019. As a consequence, she was sentenced to 14 days in federal prison, a fine of $30,000, 250 hours of community service, and one year of supervised release, all of which were imposed in September of the same year. The scandal sparked significant public outcry and severely tarnished Huffman's reputation. Since completing her sentence, she has maintained a low profile. Her experience serves as a stark reminder of the legal consequences of unethical behavior, even for those occupying privileged positions in society.
Stoney Westmoreland, famous for his role as Andy Mack on the beloved television series, got into big trouble when he was arrested in Salt Lake City, Utah, in December 2018. According to reports, he committed attempted murder. Attempt to entice a minor to have sex. Westmoreland used federal operations to transmit intrusive information about the minor and had booked a vehicle to meet the teenager with the intention of returning him to his hotel room. He also shared lewd photos and asked the teenager to do the same. However, Westmoreland's attorney argued that his client believed he was talking to an adult, but this did not help him avoid the consequences of his actions. Westmoreland faced up to 10 years in prison, but he improved his chances by entering a plea deal. Under the agreement, he was required to comply with strict conditions, including participating in random testing of electronic devices and a complete ban on interacting with anyone under the age of 18 without supervision. Adult Supervision This incident had serious consequences for Westmoreland's career, as he was fired shortly after the incident was announced. The victim's testimonies revealed that Masterson used anesthetics before perpetrating the assaults, sparking an investigation that ultimately led to legal action against him. Both Netflix and talent agency United ceased their collaborations with Masterson upon the announcement of charges against him. Subsequently, he was incarcerated after being urged by the church to safeguard its Scientology members. Masterson stood trial in 2022, but the jury failed to reach a verdict. However, his luck took a turn for the worse during his retrial in May 2023, when he was convicted by the judge. Jessica Barth, overseeing the case, even rejected a retrial request from Masterson's defense team. Michael Jace, well known for his role in the television police thriller, The Shield, shot his wife in their Los Angeles home in 2014 in front of their two children. According to reports, he was sentenced to 40 years in prison for the murder. The homicide appeared to be motivated by envy as his wife, April Jace, wanted a divorce from him and the 53-year-old actress suspected she was seeing someone else. On May 19, 2014, when April returned home, Michael shot her numerous times in front of their two sons, ages 8 and 5. He acknowledged the crime after calling 911 and his father-in-law. Michael has a history of aggressive behavior. A friend of his first wife testified in a 2005 custody hearing that he choked, slapped, and slammed his wife against a wall. Michael had a two-decade acting career. He also participated in the television series Southland and portrayed basketball legend Michael Jordan in the made-for-TV film Michael Jordan, an American Hero. Don't forget to drink a cup of tea to quench your thirst and comment number one to let me know that you are still watching this video. Tim Allen, born on June 13, 1953, is an actor and comedian best known for his appearances in Home Improvement and as the voice of Buzz Lightyear in the Toy Story film. However, before his Hollywood career, Tim Allen ran into the law. Allen was arrested at the Kalamazoo Battle Creek International Airport in October 1978 for possessing more than 650 grams of cocaine. He later pleaded guilty to narcotics trafficking charges, potentially facing life in jail. In exchange for a reduced sentence, Allen supplied the identities of additional narcotics distributors in 1981. He was sentenced to three to seven years in federal prison, which he served for two years and four months in the Sandstone Federal Correctional Institution in Minnesota. His experiences in prison prompted him to change the course of his life. Allen resorted to comedy after his release, leading to a successful entertainment career. He publicly admitted to making past mistakes and used his experiences to warn others. 
His narrative demonstrates the possibility of change and redemption, even after a significant legal offense. Allen's journey, despite his early difficulties, serves as an example of overcoming adversity and reaching success. According to the Texarkana Gazette, actress Shannon Guess Richardson, best known for her appearance on The Walking Dead, pleaded guilty in 2013 to creating, producing, having, and distributing a poison to use as a weapon. She sent threatening poisonous letters to then-President Barack Obama and two others. Richardson purchased ingredients for the scheme on her husband's credit card and account, and she produced the poison ricin in the home she shared with her husband and four children. She was also pregnant at the time she made the combination. She sent the letters to Obama, New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg, and Michael Glaze, who worked with mayors against illegal guns. The FBI gathered and studied all correspondence. Richardson discussed gun control in the letters and attempted to frame her husband by planting evidence in his car and lunchbox. Despite her attempt to frame him, she was apprehended in 2013 and sentenced to 18 years. Richardson is incarcerated in a federal prison in Fort Worth, Texas, and is scheduled to be freed in 2029. She does not qualify for parole. The shocking case of Ryan Grantham, the young actor known for his role in Riverdale, unfolded in 2020 with a tragic and horrifying incident that shook many. Grantham, then 24 years old, was sentenced to life in prison for the murder of his mother, a heinous act that sent shockwaves through the community. The courtroom drama played out in the British Columbia Supreme Court in Vancouver, where Grantham was handed a sentence with no possibility of parole for 14 years. But Grantham's crimes didn't end with matricide. He had also plotted a more sinister act, intending to carry out a massacre targeting Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Armed with multiple firearms and Molotov cocktails, he planned the attack meticulously. However, before his plan could materialize, he surrendered to the authorities. During the emotional trial, Judge Kathleen Keir described Grantham's decision to surrender as a saving grace, averting a potential mass tragedy. She emphasized the profound impact of the crime, particularly on Grantham's own family. Psychiatric evaluations revealed that Grantham had experienced a depressive episode preceding the crime. However, the judge deemed this as only a mitigating factor. Despite any underlying mental health issues, Grantham was held fully accountable for his actions and was thus sentenced accordingly. This case serves as a sobering reminder that even individuals struggling with mental health challenges must face the consequences of their actions. Zach Avery, a former actor and producer, took a dramatic shift into the world of financial crime when he admitted to securities fraud in 2021. He was found guilty of masterminding a massive Ponzi scheme, swindling over 250 investors out of a staggering $690 million, with losses totaling up to $227 million. Avery's scheme was intricate, enticing investors with false assurances that their money would be utilized to acquire film rights destined for international distribution by major streaming platforms like HBO and Netflix. However, investigations revealed that rather than fulfilling these promises, Avery diverted the funds to pay off previous investors or for his personal expenses. After being apprehended for wire fraud on April 6, 2021, Avery eventually pleaded guilty to securities fraud on October of the same year. Subsequently, he was handed a stern sentence on February 14, 2022, serving 20 years in prison and ordered to compensate victims with a hefty sum of $230 million. Among Avery's victims were individuals close to him, many of whom suffered substantial financial setbacks. Prosecutors denounced Avery's actions as shocking in its severity, emphasizing the profound breach of trust he inflicted upon those who had placed their confidence and resources in him. Avery's downfall serves as a stark reminder of the dire consequences of financial deceit and underscores the importance of vigilance against such breaches of trust.
On July 11, 2019, Robert Sylvester Kelly was apprehended by federal agents in Chicago, as reported by the Chicago Tribune. Allegations surfaced that he and several associates were involved in the recruitment of young girls for sexual relationships, isolating them from their families and exerting control over them. Simultaneously, indictments were filed against Kelly in both the United States District Court in New York City and Chicago, accusing him of bribing witnesses and victims involved in previous pornography-related prosecutions from 2008. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the trial date in New York was postponed. Meanwhile, Kelly remained in federal custody in Chicago awaiting trial, where he was reportedly attacked by Jeremiah Shane Farmers, a member of the Latin King Gang. Farmers assaulted Kelly while he slept, resulting in significant injuries, including a concussion. In June 2022, Kelly was sentenced to 30 years in prison for a previous conviction related to sex trafficking. Additionally, in September of the same year, he was found guilty of producing child pornography, Despite his lawyer's plea for a reduced sentence of 11 years, Kelly's legal troubles continued to escalate, marking a significant downfall for the once prominent musician. Don't rush to escape this boring video and forget comment number two. I will change it if I know you hate it. Lindsay Lohan, born July 2, 1986, became famous very early as an actress and singer. She became famous in the late 1990s when she starred in the Disney film The Parent Trap, launching her successful acting career. Lohan became a widely known name after her impressive performance in Mean Girls in 2004. However, her popularity came with greater interest from the public and her personal life. Her personality became a frequent topic of media interest. By 2007, she began experiencing legal problems with her first arrest in May of that year for drink driving and possession of cocaine. Just two months later, she was arrested again on similar charges. These incidents resulted in short stints in prison and required rehabilitation programs in the following years. Despite trying to overcome her legal problems, Lohan still encountered difficulties, mainly due to violating the conditions of her probation and other incidents. These issues greatly affected her career, as film producers became hesitant to cast the actress because of the perceived risks. In 2010, Lohan received her longest prison sentence for violating the conditions of her probation, along with a 90-day jail term. However, due to prison overcrowding and excellent behavior after release, she only had to serve less than two weeks. Despite her hardships, Lohan continued to battle drug problems and legal problems. She has attempted to come back many times and continues to receive attention from the public. Her story is a poignant reminder of the immense pressure that young Hollywood actresses often face and the negative consequences it can bring to their lives. C. Murder, born Corey Miller in New Orleans, was convicted of second-degree murder for the 2002 killing of a young man named Steve Thomas in a nightclub, according to NBC News. The rapper began serving a life sentence in Louisiana State Prison in 2009. However, his case has a unique aspect. Two key witnesses have come forward to deny their testimony since he detained. Furthermore, an unexpected ally stood up to defend him, reality TV star Kim Kardashian. In April 2020, the Supreme Court decided that panel decisions in major criminal prosecutions must be unanimous. Miller was convicted 10-2 in his case. Kenneth Jordan, one of the witnesses, said he was forced to lie about C. murder for fear of being sent to prison for unrelated crimes. Another witness, Darnell Jordan, also claimed that he felt forced to lie under oath. Meanwhile, the convicted artist has maintained his innocence on all counts. Winona Ryder, born as Winona Laura Horowitz on October 29, 1971, is a famous actress who has appeared in films such as Edward Scissorhands, Beetlejuice, and Little Women. However, Ryder was caught up in a high-profile court controversy in 2001, disrupting her career. In December 2001, Ryder was arrested for stealing more than $5,000 worth of merchandise, 
at Saks Fifth Avenue in Beverly Hills. This incident caused a huge scandal that attracted widespread media attention, weakening her career. During the following year, the case went to trial. Ryder was convicted of grand fraud and destruction in November 2002, but had the breaking and entering charge dismissed. She was sentenced to three years probation and 480 hours of community service in December 2002, along with fines and restitution to the store, avoiding jail time. However, the whole incident damaged her reputation and career significantly. She retired from the spotlight for a number of years. Ryder gradually returned to acting, taking on smaller roles before making a strong comeback in 2016 with the Netflix blockbuster Stranger Things. Ryder's case is a powerful reminder that even famous Hollywood stars can find themselves in trouble with the law, with serious legal and professional consequences. Todd and Julie Crisley are famous for their reality TV show, Crisley Knows Best, which first aired in 2014. The show follows the daily lives of the couple and their children in the U.S. South America, describing their life as a normal but extremely wealthy family. So how did the Chrisley family become so rich? Todd Chrisley, in particular, is famous for his achievements as a successful businessman and real estate developer. He applied his steadfast business principles, not only to his professional projects, but also to the management of his family, often leading to conflicts and conflicts within the home. Although Todd always closely supervises the family's activities, there is always someone who causes disruption or creates problems. However, the Chrisley family's ideal image is turned upside down when they are involved in a complicated case. On August 12, 2019, Todd and Julie were charged with multiple crimes, including tax evasion, conspiracy, bank fraud, and wire fraud, according to E. T. Currently, Todd is serving a 12-year prison sentence at FPC Pensacola, while Julie is serving a 7-year prison sentence at FMC Lexington, Kentucky. This legal wrangling has added a darker dimension to the reality TV family story, casting a shadow over their once glamorous lives. Wesley Snipes, born on July 31, Ace 1962, is widely recognized as both an actor and martial artist. Throughout the 1990s, he gained immense popularity through his roles in prominent action films such as Demolition Man, Blade, and Passenger 57. However, in 2006, Snipes found himself entangled in a legal battle of a different nature. He faced charges of tax evasion, accused of attempting to defraud the government of millions of dollars by neglecting to file tax returns for several years. Although Snipes was acquitted of felony tax fraud and conspiracy charges in 2008, he was convicted on three misdemeanor counts for failing to file a federal income tax return. Consequently, he was sentenced to three years in jail in 2010, the maximum penalty for his convictions. Despite appealing the decision, his appeals were denied, and he commenced serving his term in December of that year. It wasn't until April 2013 that Snipes was released after spending close to two years in the McKean Federal Correctional Institution in Pennsylvania. Throughout his sentence, Snipes remained a prominent figure in the media. Since his release, he has been engaged in legal disputes regarding his convictions. Additionally, he utilized his time behind bars to deepen his understanding of philosophy and religion. Returning to acting post-incarceration, Snipes has struggled to fully resurrect his career. His story stands as a cautionary tale, highlighting the severe repercussions of financial missteps. It underscores the importance of tax compliance, even for individuals of high profile who might believe themselves immune to such mundane concerns. Furthermore, his experiences shed light on the broader consequences of such actions, which not only tarnish personal reputations, but also have far-reaching effects on professional status and public perception. Joe Sun, a Korean-American with a diverse background in mixed martial arts, boxing, professional wrestling, and acting, 
gained recognition for his role in the 1997 film Austin Powers, International Man of Mystery. However, Sun's notoriety stems from his extensive criminal history. In 2011, Sun was sentenced to seven years to life in prison in California for his involvement in a gang rape that occurred in 1990 involving torture. Subsequently, he received an additional 27-year sentence for the murder of his fellow inmate, Michael Thomas Graham. As a result, Sun is currently serving a sentence of 34 years to life in prison. Additionally, Sun has faced numerous arrests and convictions for various other offenses, including vandalism, probation violations, and non-compliance with sentence terms. During his trial, Sun faced charges of rape, torture, and murder. He and his accomplices subjected the victim to torture and rape before releasing her, causing severe physical and psychological trauma. Of particular severity was Sun's involvement in the murder, which led to a significant prison term, underscoring the dangerous nature of his criminal behavior. Jen Shaw, an American television personality and former cast member of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, found herself entangled in legal trouble when she was prosecuted and convicted of a felony. Shaw gained notoriety not only for her presence in the entertainment industry, but also for the questionable means through which she amassed her wealth. Engaged in financial fraud and scams over an extended period, Shaw partnered with her assistant, Stuart Smith, in operating a telemarketing venture that peddled non-existent products and services. Their fraudulent activities victimized numerous customers before catching the attention of the FBI leading to their arrest in 2021. Initially maintaining their innocence, Shaw and Smith eventually struck a deal with the America government, pleading guilty to their charges. In 2022, Shaw admitted to wire fraud and was handed a sentence of six and a half years behind bars. This severe consequence not only marked a significant blow to her career, but also tarnished her reputation within the entertainment community. Josh Duggar, known for his role in the reality TV show 19 Kids and counting on TLC amassed a considerable fan base. However, his career took a nosedive when his involvement in criminal activities came to light. In April 2021, Duggar, a prominent television personality, was charged with possession of child pornography. Despite pleading not guilty, he was released on bail pending trial. In December 2021, he was found guilty on one of the charges, and in May 2022, he received a sentence of up to 151 months in prison roughly equivalent to 12.5 years. Despite arguments from his legal team for a more lenient sentence, citing lack of prior accusations before indictment, Duggar's career and reputation suffered irreparable damage due to his heinous crime. His actions of possessing and viewing sexually exploitative material were exposed, resulting in a prison term until October 10, 2032. This serves as a stark reminder of the severity of his offense and the consequences he must endure. Drew Drexel, winner of season 11 of American Ninja Warrior, is facing serious charges of child sex crimes. According to the United States Attorney's Office for the District of New Jersey, Drexel was arrested for seeking sex with a minor and inciting her to send sexually explicit images. Investigations revealed that he traveled to New Jersey to have sex with the minor and lured her to Connecticut to engage in illegal sex acts. Drexel, 35, was once an icon in the American Ninja Warrior community, but now his name is famous for his alleged crimes. The complaints describe how he recruited and groomed the victim, even threatening to make the victim harm himself if caught. Drexel was charged with summary counts of production of child pornography and use of interstate commerce to entice minors. He made his first appearance in the U.S. District Court for the Middle District of Florida and his attorney has not commented on the case. This incident caused a stir in the community and attracted widespread attention from the media. He is currently facing serious consequences of his actions and will have to wait for the next trial process.
Kalin Rashad Walker, renowned for his role in the movie Superfly, faced a dire fate as he received a sentence of 50 years to life imprisonment upon being found guilty of rape. Walker's criminal journey commenced in 2013 when he utilized social media platforms like Instagram and Twitter to lure women with promises of professional opportunities and encounters with celebrities. Prosecutors unveiled a disturbing narrative, revealing that Walker sexually assaulted four women and three girls whom he had connected with on social media. Exploiting their trust, Walker would often isolate his victims before engaging in inappropriate sexual conduct. Despite their pleas for help, Walker callously disregarded their distress and continued his brutal actions. Following his conviction in April 2022, Walker's attorney asserted his client's innocence and expressed intentions to appeal the verdict. Nevertheless, the community was left reeling by the outcome, casting doubt on the legal system's capacity to safeguard victims of sexual crimes. Walker's case serves as a sobering reminder of the imperative to prioritize the protection of vulnerable individuals and to hold perpetrators accountable for their actions. The video ends here. Remember, there are still many other interesting and engaging videos in my playlist. Before you leave, please leave a comment number one if you found the video interesting, or number two if not. It's that simple, isn't it? Thank you.